Well, hello there, and thanks for watching. I'm Ali Benazir, your friendly neighborhood book monster. And yes, I devour books for pleasure. I love books. I've been reading books since I was in the womb. It's kind of dark in there, so I use a candle. Mom did not like that at all, especially when the candle dripped. Ooh, terrible. Uh, and this is the world's most dangerous book review show. Today I have for you a fabulous book. It's called, well, I'm not going to tell you what it's called yet. I'm going to tell you about the other books in the same category that I've read, which I really, really liked. These are books on happiness. Let me show you some books on happiness. We have Happier by Tal Ben-Shahar. Um, Harvard dude. It's very popular class he teaches over there. And a great book. Behold, it is thin. It has reasonably big print, which means it's a quick read. And you can get a lot out of it, even though it's a quick read. Fantastic. The Happiness Hypothesis by Jonathan Haidt, H-A-I-D-T, Haidt. Jonathan Haidt is a super genius, and this book is brilliant. Ancient wisdom, modern science equals current happiness, exactly my kind of stuff. Great book. The How of Happiness. Notice the bookmark in it. This means I'm reading it, reading it right now. Really good. Uh, Sonia Gubmirsky, another Harvard person, actually, she lived in my dorm, Cabot House, and she lives... 10 blocks away from me, as it turns out. So I'm going to see if I can get coffee with her. But this is a really good book. I'm really enjoying this. And it's structured. It has exercises. Good stuff. Oh, and this one, Stumbling on Happiness by my personal hero, Dan Gilbert. Not only is this book excellent, um, it's also riotously funny. You need to read this. It's really good. And today's selection, The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. Behold, there it is. It's got a little bluebird on there, inside joke. You have to read the book to find out what the bluebird's all about. So, uh, five things quick that I really like about this book. So, first off, it got me going immediately. I started reading it and boom, next thing you know, I'm clearing out clutter, I'm clearing out my closet, I'm creating little resolution charts like this one right here. You know, you set up a whole month and then you tick off the stuff that you want to do. And notice there's a whole bunch of check marks already. Uh, meditate every day, no email before 11 a.m. Good stuff. Make your own. So that was the first thing I really liked about it. The second one was that uh, it got me started on a long-term plan. So as you saw at the resolutions chart, that's for long-term change in my life and also just launching big projects that make me happy in the long term, like taking scuba lessons, like taking flight lessons, the stuff that really matters. Uh, third, uh, Gretchen turns out that she is also a book monster and she reads voraciously so you better believe she researched everything under the sun to come up with this book and so she puts in little tidbits in there about uh, you know Samuel Johnson quote from Samuel Butler quote from Nietzsche so lots of random little stuff that I really like it's all inside there and uh, what else do we got here oh yes number four is she comes up with her own personal system of self-improvement. She calls them uh, her 12 personal commandments and also the four splendid truths about happiness and also the secrets of adulthood. And I think those alone are worth the price of admission because uh, not only are hers very useful, but it gets you motivated to start your own. So you have your own little system of, hey, this is how I'm going to live my life consciously and deliberately and do these things. So check that chapter out for sure. So let me tell you a little bit about the structure of the book and then share some choice tidbits that I really enjoyed from it. It's divided into 12 chapters, each one corresponding to one of the months of the year. And for each month, Gretchen has a particular topic, an area of her life in which she intends to increase her happiness. For example, relationships or attitude or energy levels. So she does that each month and then there are little subtopics in each one. So, for example, for November, keep a contented heart, attitude. Laugh out loud, use good manners, give positive reviews, find an area of refuge. So she does those things systematically over the course of the month and then presents to you the results. This is pretty important because one of the best ways of finding out whether something is going to make you happy is to observe other people and see if it's made them happy because... If it, may, if it worked for them, it's very likely to work for you as well. So she's already done the experiment for you. Use the fruits of her labor. 
for January, for example, was have more energy, vitality, go to sleep earlier, ex exercise better, toss, restore, organize, tackle a nagging task, and act more energetic. So she does each one of those and tells you how she went about doing it. And if you want to do them, you can too. Or if you can design uh, something else that's more pertinent for your life, you can do that too. And let's see, some choice snippets from the book. Ah, February. That was on love. Remember love and marriage. So the minimum time necessary to get a world-class hug, one that actually produces oxytocin, the bonding chemical, is six seconds. Okay, so that little <gasps> insta-hug does not work. Has to last at least six seconds. So let me demonstrate. Here we go. Come here, camera. Let me give you a little hug. Oh, right here. There you go. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand. Isn't that better now? Okay, good. That is the hug technique. You heard it here first. All right, what else we got for you here? Oh, yes, both men and women find relationships with women to be more intimate and enjoyable than those with men, and both turn to women for understanding. And this apparently has something to do with the way men are built. They're just not really designed for that kind of intimate, conversationally-based connection. They're more about, you know, uh, doing stuff for you and communicating in short grunts and stuff. Um, let's see, by being happy yourself, you're better able to make others happy. So it turns out that one of the biggest imperatives for your life is to be happy because when you're happy, then everybody else around you ends up being happier too. There's this thing called emotional contagion that Gretchen talks about, which means that whenever you have a certain emotion, the people around you unconsciously catch it. And apparently that's um, why silly people, they have this contagious effect on other people. They allow other people to be silly. And people who allow themselves to be silly are a third happier. That's pretty good. Let's see, a couple of fallacies. Uh, these are psychological constructs that get us into trouble. Arrival fallacy, thinking you'll be happy when you get there. Eh, doesn't happen. Floating world fallacy, thinking immediate pleasure cut off from future purpose will make you happy. That does not happen either. On the other hand, pre-goal attainment, positive affect, does happen, which means that uh, as you take, pleasure in an you take pleasure in an atmosphere of growth and gradual progress towards a goal, anticipation is huge. And... Let's see, a couple more choice snippets before we sign off here. Um, yes, oh, this is one of my favorite. Each common interest between people boosts the chances of a lasting relationship and also brings about a 2% increase in life satisfaction. Not 1.5%, not 3.2%, 2%. Psychologists know these things. All right. Now, one of my favorite parts of the book was the month of August, in which Gretchen takes it upon herself to contemplate the heavens and imitate a spiritual master. She picks a certain Saint Therese of Lisieux, who died at the age of 24 and yet left a very rich legacy. So I looked around for my potential spiritual master to imitate, and I found on my coffee table, behold, Guan Yin, the Celestial Bodhisattva of Compassion and the Protector of Children. And I'm thinking it's going to be a piece of cake to imitate uh, Guan Yin, with the minor detail that she is female of Southeast Asian extraction and made of bronze. But hey, challenge is what makes it all worthwhile. Anyway, I'm Ali Benazir, and thank you so much for watching the first of the world's most dangerous video book reviews. There will be more of these and other good stuff coming your way at awakenyourgenius.com where I create material for brilliant people like yourself. So don't be shy and do swing by. Thank you for your attention. Hope you enjoyed it.